The mini console craze, it pretty much started with the NES Classic Edition, uh, but you could probably trace it back to earlier with stuff like the Atari Flashbacks and the Sega Genesis Classic mini game consoles and even the Neo Geo X Gold. Uh, you know, just repackaging old classic game systems with a slew of games uh, for, you know, a slightly budget price potentially and putting them into, uh, you know, big box stores like Best Buy and Target, even places like Walgreens where you just walk in there and go like, oh man, I remembered Altered Beast. The market for those have been around for a while, but the NES Classic Edition truly brought it into the mainstream. And ever since then, pretty much everybody who had uh, the license to a classic game console tried to do it again. Uh, including Sega, and oh boy, did Sega try to do it again. Sega had a deal with a company called At Games, or AT Games, where they would produce various Sega Genesis plug-and-play mini game consoles with multiple classic games built into them, and they would sell them for maybe like 50 bucks or so, and a lot of times these classic game consoles would appear, uh, like I said, in Walgreens, Rite Aids, Walmarts, dollar stores, all of that stuff where, you know, people that didn't weren't, weren't really in the know about video games would shop and they'd walk past those store shelves they'd see that and go sure and you know what it worked because they had like so many versions of these sega genesis plug and plays release um but around like 2018 2019 uh sega knew that it was a good idea to kind of you know make a really big splash into the mini game console market that nintendo initiated with the nes classic edition and snes classic edition so they announced the sega genesis mini done by at games sega may have had a relationship with at games but it was not good for the kids i.e us at games was notorious for their quality control issues uh, a lot of times like the game consoles themselves would be very cheap and really hollow, uh, the controllers weren't great, and then the game quality themselves in within the game console itself, playing the games, it just wasn't up to snuff. In my opinion, it was good enough, but meh. When the NES Classic Edition cost 60 bucks and these at games consoles were, you know, maybe 30, 40, 50 bucks, yeah, they may have been less expensive, but at what cost? So when Sega announced that they were gonna do a Sega Genesis Mini in the same vein as the NES Classic Edition and SNES Classic Edition, and they announced that it was gonna be at games, there were riots. So then Sega announced they were doing the Sega Genesis Mini in-house. They contracted M2, which was a company that's really well known for very high quality emulation and game preservation. Uh, and uh, they hired them to uh, work on the Sega Genesis Mini and thus, we got one of the best mini consoles ever. The Sega Genesis Mini is legitimately phenomenal. It has so many games included, 40 games, and then two additional titles. They really didn't have to go this hard with it, but they did, and it is so damn good because of it. They poured so much quality into this release. Uh, the controllers feel phenomenal. The game system itself, like the, even the cartridge flap, even though it's not functional, it's still a flap. You can you can like put your little finger into it. And then there's a volume dial, it doesn't do anything, but it replicates the original Sega Genesis system. It is amazing. And then the game lineup itself, I mean like they have like all of the mainstays of the Sega Genesis library, or the majority of them. You don't get like Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles and couple other titles here and there, but for the most part, you get a wonderful array of Sega Genesis games. Even games that you may not expect. Uh, there are licensed games. You get Disney games like Castle of Illusion and World of, World of Illusion. Games like Contra Hardcore, Castlevania Bloodlines, games from Konami that, you know, like Sega could have easily cheaped out and just done like, oh man, like, like the Sega titles, you know, something that you'd see in like a Sega Genesis compilation on PS3 and 360 or PS2 or PS4 and three, uh, PS4 and Xbox One. No, like they went out of their way to find like all the licenses for all of these wonderful games. And a lot of these games are not made by Sega. A lot of these games are licensed it's a phenomenal. And even then, they got the Tetris license. Uh, there is Tetris for the Sega Genesis here, which was an unreleased game. It, it never officially came out. And they got the Tetris license and they were able to put this version of Tetris on the Sega Genesis Mini. 
And, and like, the, the NES Classic Edition didn't even have Tetris. And that's the system you'd expect to see Tetris on. An absolutely slam dunk of a mini console. It's, it's really hard to find any problem with it. Uh, but the thing is, like, these mini consoles, like, everybody wants them, but, like, how much do you actually use them? And that's kind of my thing, you know, like, when a new mini console's announced, I'm like, oh, damn, this is gonna be rad! And then, like, you know, it's, it's something where it's just, like, you know, this is really cute and cool, it's a fun collectible, but the amount of love that goes into a Sega Genesis Mini like this, you know, like, for how much it gets used, uh, at least by me, personally, I'm kind of like bummed out how little I use it because, you know, like it, it's its its own dedicated device. I have to plug it in. I have to, you know, like get it, get it all hooked up, everything like that. And, you know, like it's kind of like would I do this or would I just play most of these games on Nintendo Switch, of which most of these are available on that platform. And, you know, it just kind of goes to show how much these mini consoles are pretty much just kind of collector's items. So does it really matter that the game quality is great or the game quality is poor? I, I don't know. I mean, like, you know, to us, you know, like if you're looking at it critically, you're like, all right, yeah. You know, like obviously that makes this a better product overall, everything like that. But overall, I feel like most people just like these mini consoles because they're kind of cool for like a weekend. Uh, and then you kind of just put it on your shelf or throw it in your drawer and then you forget about it. Which is why I found it to be a little silly how people were kind of going like, What's the what what when these were announced the Game Gear Micro so it was a warm summer night in 2020 and I remember seeing just an announcement pop up that Sega announced a new mini console the Game Gear Micro and I immediately felt like oh wow that, that that's kind of cool you know it's really damn hard to play Game Gear games nowadays especially in the form factor you kind of initially remember the Game Gear in. You know, like, if you don't know about the Game Gear, it was pretty much Sega's competitor towards the original Game Boy. And, uh, you know, it was, it had a color screen, a backlit screen, but it was really big and uh, didn't really have the same support and the amount of games and the amount of must-have games that the original Game Boy had. It chewed through batteries. Uh, it did okay, but it didn't do okay enough. And I think a major problem with the Game Gear library is that uh, most of the cool games on the Game Gear are uh, also available on the Sega Master System and uh, they're kind of a little better on that platform too. So the Game Gear is kind of more of a novelty nowadays, but it's definitely a novelty a lot of people are still nostalgic for. But uh, I think like in terms of the stuff that, you know, I'd want to see Sega kind of milk a little more than than the, the stuff from the Sega Genesis era, like I'm, I'm kind of like, I, I want to see Sega Saturn and Dreamcast stuff real bad. And it's just kind of annoying to see Sega just constantly go back in, just go back in the nostalgia stuff with the Sega Genesis era, because that's, you know, it makes sense, because frankly, that was the era that they were like at their peak in. That was the era that people remember them for. That was the era that people like buying, you know, like products from and, and merchandise from and all that stuff. But, you know, like, there's only so many times you can re-release Sega Genesis era stuff to me, and I'm gonna be excited. At least this was somewhat different, but it was still kind of like, eh, I don't know, man. But Sega was doing something that I really wanted to see Nintendo do, which was kind of do a mini console version of one of their handhelds. There was some talk uh, around the time that the SNES Classic Edition came out, where, Se uh, you know, people were talking about, oh, what if the next console is a Game Boy Classic? And it was the idea of like, oh, would you plug it into the TV? Would it be a standalone little handheld kind of thing? Uh, the idea of it was really, really cool. And uh, Sega beat them to it. And they still f***ed up. So I bought these recently. I bought the whole set. You know, there, there are four different colors. And uh, even I, I already knew how small these things were. And uh, I was still shocked at how, how tiny <laughs> these boxes are. I mean, th this is literally like, like the size of a cigarette box. So when Sega said Game Gear Micro, they, they truly meant Game Gear Micro. These are tiny. These are more so meant to be little keychains that you can play. And on top of that, as you can see, plus four. Uh, there's only four games per device. Uh, so, you know, each of the different colors have a different lineup of four games. Uh, couple that with the fact that these things are so damn tiny, uh, why would you even want to play games on it? And you get kind of a confusing release. But to be fair, like I was saying with the Sega Genesis Mini, you know, like even though that was such a high quality game system, I didn't play it as much as I wanted to. And that's just because, you know, it's just like, what's more convenient? Plugging in that console every time I wanted to play or just playing the games I want to play 
on the Nintendo Switch and the games that are only on the Sega Genesis Mini, it's just like, well, you know, too bad. The Game Gear Micro at least understands that it's just like, all right, this is pretty much just a collector's item. Let's just make something kind of cute and collectible that you can also play, but that's not a priority for us. But I wanna see just how playable or unplayable one of these are. Uh, so we got black, whatever color, that, it might be yellow, it might be green, I don't know. You, you, you step a day in my shoes and you'll understand what it's like to be colorblind. <laughs> Red and blue. Uh, so this one feels like it has a bit of a, a, bit of a m bigger variety of games. You have Sonic and uh, Puyo Puyo on there at the very least. I have a list of the games pulled up. Uh, turn to the back, we can see we got uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 1 on the Game Gear, Puyo Puyo 2, OutRun, and Royal Stone. So pretty decent variety of games here. That's kind of a good like, ah oh, man, a little, little Sega variety pack there. Then we have uh, Yellow, I looked up, it is Yellow. Uh, this seems to be uh, kind of a, an RPG related one, or at least like mainly just Shining Force games. I believe this one is mostly RPG stuff. So you have three Shining Force games and then in a Puyo Puyo RPG. I can tell that's Puyo Puyo. Over on blue, we have uh, Sonic and Tails, which uh, is Sonic Chaos over here in North America. Then we have Sonic and Tails, Gunstar Heroes. Uh, let's see, Sylvian Tail and Baku Baku Animal. I know my go-to Game Gear Micro. And then uh, I believe this these are like some Megami Tensei games. Uh, Shinobi and then Columns. Or at least I'm, I'm looking at a, like a wiki page off, off screen here. So uh, I believe uh, Megami Tensei, Shinobi, Columns. Uh, so if these were all included in just one, one Game Gear Micro, not a bad lineup. I had to buy four of these things. And as, as little collectibles, like, yeah, this, this is kind of cool. I mean, like, it is kind of cool. Look, look how small these things are. But as an actual playable thing, uh, gotta, gotta take a look at this. All right, ooh, an egg carton if you, oh, wow. <laughs> That's fucking pathetic. So it literally just comes with like a very small little uh, instruction manual. And here is the Game Gear Micro. Aww. So it takes uh, two AAA batteries and uh, the D-pad, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking at? Uh, abysmal. This does not feel great. Uh, the buttons, at least everything's like very like, like, like very specific as in like, I feel like it'd be kind of hard to, you know, like it's still easy to hit the buttons, uh, which is very good. Uh, oh, you can use this for power, and uh, you can use this for volume, you have a little headphone jack, a little, you know, a little power switch, all of that stuff. You know, like everything looks very functional, and it, it, it's very commendable that they got this um, in such a small size. But, but it's just like, there's only so much science can do until you say like, well, wh why are you doing that? <laughs> Bro, cancer still exists. So I'm gonna plug this in. We're gonna see exactly how this, uh, how this all feels here. We're gonna see. Wow. I mean, like, I I'm, I'm charmed. Overall, for something like playing Sonic the Hedgehog 1 on the Game Gear, um, this is pretty cute, and it runs very well. It's more playable than you may think. But then you start to play other games, like Puyo Puyo 2 included, which is near impossible <laughs> to play. Like, with Puyo Puyo, you need to see, like, the two colors and, and shapes of the, uh, of, of the little, little Puyos, Puyo Blobs, whatever. In Puyo Puyo, you need to see the two colors and two shapes, uh, of your pieces as you bring them down and it's really hard to see it on on a screen that's the size of a postage stamp and then a game like royal stone like i'm like I, I i couldn't even get past the damn menu screen because everything was in japanese uh our, our run is like fine enough on there um but overall you know it's just like four games and like the menu system is cute it is really cute and, and it is cool to play something like that on such a small device like it, it truly does work i i think what's what's the coolest thing about the game gear micro is the fact that it works for how small it is you know it, it's on the verge of unplayable in some instances but some games work just fine on it uh the rpgs slash 
you know, games like Puyo Puyo. I don't really know, man. But it's a cute little collectible device, even if the screen is too small. Which is where the Big Window Micro comes in. So this is based on an accessory you would buy for the original Game Gear, where it would, you know, magnify the screen size. The Game Gear Micro, the screen quality is just fine. The screen size is just kind of ass. So uh, hopefully uh, the Big Window Micro helps out with this. Uh, pretty much, oh my god. It, it comes in pieces. So this obviously shows how much the Game Gear Micro is literally kind of just like a cutesy little thing. It's not meant to be taken seriously. I mean, like you look at something like this and you're just kind of like, all right, why, why didn't you just make the damn thing bigger? But it's supposed to be like kind of a fun little like reference throwback to the original Game Gear and, and how that all uh, operated with the original Sega big window for the Game Gear. Uh, and you know, now it actually makes sense. So uh, let's see how much of a difference this makes. Not a damn thing. So in a nutshell, that's the Game Gear Micro. I know I didn't even get op get these open. I'll, I'll do that on my own time because it, it's gonna be the exact same stuff, but with just different games and a different colored uh, system. And also I got these all part of a bundle for pretty cheap uh, because you could actually do that in Japan. You could just get all of these in one bundle. Uh, honestly, they were like, I think they were originally like 60 bucks a pop. Uh, so like, or at least around that price. So about like the same price as you would pay for like an NES Classic Edition or, or a Sega Genesis Mini on its own for just one of these is preposterous. Obviously, this is just meant to be a cute little thing. Uh, I think it's really going with the whole idea that like mini consoles are, are kind of just more so collectibles, you know? It's really weird how excited we get over stuff like that and how much we want, you know, other mini consoles to exist. When in reality, like I feel like most people just kind of like they get them, they play them for a weekend, and then never again. But you know, as long as it makes you happy, you know, it's something where it's just like, why not? Who cares? And, and honestly, the Game Gear Micro, I think it kind of makes me happy. It's such a dumb little stupid s s s son of a bitch. And I'm just like, you know, like it, it's a cute little collectible. It's honestly like very high quality for what it is, which is just supposed to be a miniature Game Gear. And it does that pretty damn well. Now, of course, I would prefer if it was like, you know, at a, at a better size and, you know, included all the games here and then some all in one thing. But as they are, you know, like, I, I think it's kind of cute. I, I could go without, you know, the separate SKUs and, and you know, like, as, as small as it is, you know, and this being the only way they're doing a Game Gear mini console. Uh, you know, I would like it if, like, you know, they took the Game Gear in its original size and, and shrunk it down quite a bit, but, you know, kind of just made it more manageable because the original Game Gear is literally, like, like, oh, it's pretty big. So, you know, shrinking it down would be great. Not this much, though. But I think the fact that it's so small makes it cool. It, it makes it so then, like, this is more interesting than it would be otherwise because, you know, the Game Gear is, you know, like, it's beloved by many, but... I feel like it just doesn't have the same excitement going towards it that other systems have, even Sega systems, you know? So if you're gonna do a Game Gear Micro, I understand why they went this way, and I think it's cute, I think it's kinda cool, but it's also pretty worthless. <laughs> but then again, a lot of mini consoles are, so hey, if you're gonna go worthless, you might as well go f***ing crazy while you're at it.